Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday. We are blessed and honored to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. God has been good. God has been faithful. And we are so thankful. Church, we ask you to get to your feet with us. And like every Sunday, we invite you to help us fill the house of the Lord with prayer today. Thank you, Lord, for another day, God. Lord, I thank you for the breath that you have placed in our lungs, Lord, and giving us the opportunity to come here today, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for us, for all the love that you poured out for us, and all the blessings that you give us every morning. Lord, today I pray for those, Lord, that are hurting this morning. I pray for those that have needs this morning, Lord, that you would fill those needs, God. Lord, I pray for Israel, God, that you would bring healing hands, Lord, and strength over them, Lord, and that you would comfort them during this time. And I just ask that you would allow us to feel blessed this morning, open our hearts to receive from your word, to walk out of here blessed, knowing your word, and to be able to teach someone else your word. God, I thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Knowing the love of God, knowing the peace of God, knowing the joy of God is such a beautiful thing. Deuteronomy 4 9 says, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. It's just such a beautiful thing to keep going in your family, right? May his favor be upon us and a thousand generations. Our children, their children, and their children. You know, I personally don't have children, but it's a beautiful thing to see my nieces just love on the Lord, you know, and what an honor it is to be able to spread that love. You know, and this morning, we get to lift our voice, we get to raise our hands and surrender and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this love, Lord. Thank you, God, for this peace. God, thank you for this joy. We invite you, church, raise your voice and just exalt his mighty name with us today.
Someone in the children's ministry over there? No, no. No, it's right now. We want everybody to get it here in the house of God. There are many lessons to learn in life. How many know life is a learning process? When we think we got it all done, we're mistaken. There's a lot of lessons to learn. The last lesson you're not going to learn is how to die. We went and been told ahead of time what's going to happen, but it's going to happen in our lives. So the beginning of Jesus Christ, we were taught. If we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith, God moves his hand and allows us to believe. To believe is an essential part of our Christian walk. We understand this. We understand the word says, for those who believe, all things are possible. There's a third step that a lot of times we just pass by. That will put God's blessings into place. How many want to be blessed of God? There's a thing that I think we totally forgot. Just bypass in such a hurry. How many have read your Bibles before? Amen. How many have gone past Genesis 1 1? The <laughs> reason I ask is because the answer is right there. Everything you needed to know is right there in the first three verses of the Bible. It's not enough to believe it, it's not enough to walk by faith, but you have to speak it into existence. Amen. You have to confess it into existence. Not only believe it, but you confess it to God, I believe. And to those that believe, all things are possible. When I stop and think about God's creation, I thought about a little story. I heard that. that was very good as we go into this message. And a little girl goes to mom and says, Mama, how did we get here? And mama says, sit down, she goes, sit down. Yeah. Way at the beginning of everything, God created man and made Adam and Eve. They had babies, and the baby, and the duration, and we're here. Oh, I got it. I understand that. She goes and says, Dad, how 
How did we get here? Oh, me, uh, way, way back at the beginning. The big explosion, 18 fell all different ways. It went transforming and going, 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 going through a process. And then, we, then the monkey came, and here we are. He goes, Mom. Goes back to the mom and says, Mom, uh, you say we come from Adam and Eve. My dad says we come from the monkey. Oh, me, God, that's easy to understand. I told you about my family, and he told you about his. <laughs> I think there are lessons to be learned in that, right? <laughs> it can't be said any clearer than that. But when I go to Genesis uh, chapter 1, in the first three verses, puts everything in the place. Here's the one thing we've been in such a way to read through the Bible that we forgot. And see, the thing we're written there is to teach us lessons. And sometimes the lessons are so cover our ears are so covered to reality we didn't see it. I mean, how many have been driving your car, come to the stop sign, look right, look left, take off, and beep, you didn't see it. They were right there. How many know that God's blessings are in place for your life? How many know that God wants you to prosper? How many know God wants you to be blessed in your life? How many understand these things? And they're all there. It's all written. We talked about the conditions of how it works in God's time and all, but everything is in. The one thing we just kind of blew right over the top and didn't see it, it's right there. He said, you need to speak it into existence. Genesis 1 1. Can somebody quote it for me? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Correct. Verse number two. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovering over the face of the water. And here's the number three that we haven't done. What does it say? You have your Bible? You see what it says? What does verse three say? Good man. That's it right there. It's right there. That's it. <laughs> See? That's why we've missed it. We're going to take off. Then God said, let there be love. Oh! No, no, wait, wait, wait. And God did what? That's <coughs> it. He spoke it into existence. It was there. It came clear and into play because God spoke it. He declared it. And people in our Christian world, if we want blessing over our families, we need to declare it. Amen. We need to believe that in spite of how difficult it seems sometimes raising our kids, we do want them to be blessed and to be prospered. It is our greatest desire, our greatest passion that we go to life that they can achieve those greatest dreams and be able to enjoy life to its fullest. But without God, people, our children are lost. Without God, there is no purpose. Without God, they will prosper at times but never receive the peace and the love that surpasses all understanding. And that's the reason why we're gathered here today to, to say that today we'll go out of here. Once we're done praying, we can say, as far as I'm concerned, me and my house, we're in the of the Lord. It's a commitment that we as parents have to make. It's a desire and a passion that goes beyond all understanding. When a lot of mercy comes to our parents, and it will come, it's part of the course. It's not always going to be huggy, huggy, lovey, lovey, love. We're going to have our moments of difficulty. But when those moments come, it's time to raise up and to believe. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's a strong conviction, a strong saying. But see, it's got to go beyond saying. It's got to take action. You've got to speak to it. you got to bring it into existence. So today I'm going to speak to you about the topic. How will God be able to bless my children? First of all, you have to go to the source of God's blessings. Psalm 127, 1. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds a house, though the labor labor in vain. And what it's saying is this. As you go through life and you're constructing dreams and uh, so many desires of life and putting together family and plans and issues or goals of life, he says, unless God is included in it, you work in vain. Amen. I mean, you can have a lot of happy times. How many of you have already enjoyed your vacations this year? Amen. And the rest of us? Yeah, we're still on hold. We're just waiting for, for the event to be done in, in two weeks, and then Johnny's wedding, and then we're ready. I don't know for what, but we're ready. But it gives a great time to have But see, it's nice to have plans in these hours of all. That's cool. That's not a problem. But it says, in your planning, always include God in the plans. Always believe what part God is going to take in everything that you do. You can't put him aside and then ask him to come in when it's not going your way. You can just go along and go your way and say, oh, I'm an adult sitting on your bed. Oh my God, where are you? You didn't include me in the plans. You didn't call upon me. 
Did not Jesus say, I go, well, I will send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lead you to all truth? Is that what the Bible teaches? So if that's what the Lord wants of our life, it is our first decision in life is to include God into everything that we're talking about. God, it will be your will. See, everything conforms to God's will. God has a perfect will for your life. How many know that God wants you to prosper? Amen. And to be blessed. Amen. But he also wants you to obey. You understand that the bottom line to all this, you hold the key. It's not that he can't. It's not that he won't. It's that you don't want it. You make the choices that will determine God's blessing or his turning back on whatever he's going to do. So in Psalm 127 says, as we go, unless the Lord builds a house. And see, how does the Lord build a house? He builds it in you, dad, mom. He builds it in you. You are the transmitter of God's love and passion and teaching to your children as they go forward. God has chosen you to make that job. To give God that love that I may be blessed. Therefore, he says, as I build a house, let me build it with the architects of that mom. Let that mom take uh, control of the situation, make all the plans, pray over everything. And when God's in control of your life, my friend, God is in control of your house and your family. And where God comes in, there's nothing impossible for God. So we go to the source. Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 4. We find the directions that God gave. What God asked of, of the people. What we're supposed to do. So I'm going to do, I'm going to let uh, one of the dads that's in the congregation read uh, what the children are supposed to do. All right? So somebody has got a good, strong voice that wants to read this for me and only read up to the part that has to do with what parents are supposed to what the children, I'm sorry, what the children are supposed to be in this family. Somebody have it real quick? More real quick? Adam, do you have it? Somebody have it? Ephesians. Ephesians 6. Okay. One through four. But just one, one, two, and three. Listen, kids, listen, children. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Amen. All right, children, do what? And all the friends say, children, obey. Obey your parents. Now, is that too hard to understand? What part of obey do we not understand, kids? And when I say kids, I speak to all of us. Because nobody walked in the world being that mom. You walked in as a child. As part of that family. And when the Lord says to the young ones, under the covering of that mom. If your dad and mom are alive, they will be your dad and mom for all your life. They have the right. They've been given the right by God. To govern over your life, to teach you, to prepare you what's ahead. Regardless of what you kids might believe or think, that and mom are at least 20 years ahead of you in experience of life. Before you ever work, they were already walking, they were already teaching about going through life and learning their own concepts of life, things they had to learn. He says, honor your father and your mother. Now, all the children that want to live a long life, if you're obedient, God is going to give you a long life. Yes, amen, amen. 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 I said, God will give you a long life. And a blessed life. I guess mom was really obedient. But she's 96 and she's still going 100 miles an hour. You know? The key to God's blessing, the key to your household being blessed, is that the children obey their parents and they understand that God puts them in control of the household, not you. They're the ones that can call the shots. Learn from them. And I know a lot of times they'll say it. When I get up and have my kids, I'm not going to be like my mom and dad. Don't raise your hand, please. In your moment of experience, and anger, you say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to be like my mom. And later on in life, you find out that you're exactly like your mom. Yeah. <laughs> it's all there. I show my mom, you look like my dad's hands. You know? Got the little wrinkles here. And a lot of influence of dad and mom on your life. He says, so kids, if you want to be blessed and have a long life and have your own family and your own kids, obey your dad and your mom. Honor them. Bring honor to them. Don't bring disgrace or anger or strife. Honor them through your actions, through your obedience. There's nothing greater than we experience the joys of your victories. That's our greatest joy to so watch you go through victory.
then it all starts by honoring your dad and your mom. Okay, Myra, you're next about the parents. Now I'm going to talk to the parents. And parents? This works. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Oh, look, did you hear that? Don't make me mad. Jesus said to daddy and mama, don't make me mad. No, what Jesus is saying is this. Don't provoke them by pointing out their weaknesses. Because there's going to be a time you're going to make them really mad when you don't give them permission to do what they want to do. You're not going to get that kids and say, oh, the Bible says you can't make me mad. The Bible says you're supposed to not make me get all upset out of the Bible. No, but the Bible says he told that mom, teach him in discipline. Teach him. Teach him to say, you know, parents, sometimes even though you have the means, it's not wrong to say no just to teach him. Bottom line. But I have it. Teach him that not everything is for free in life. Let him understand that. Let him learn the reality of what life is really all about. See, while there are kids being raised in your household, they have no idea what the cost of life is all about. No, no whatsoever. When we were being raised and we got a chance to go to the restaurant, we would look at the menu and we look not on the left hand side, on the right hand side. We go down like this. And the cheap as you go across, and that's what you need. Now, you go to the restaurant and go on the left side. And they look at the key bones, the prime rib, all that kind of stuff. Regardless of this size says, because anyway, they're not paying. Amen. Isn't that right? Especially good up that kind of <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's ironic how kids are, this is the process of life we're going through, okay? Your kids are small, and now kids would rather get cards than presents or breath. I mean, understand that. Because they don't even read the card, they just open and put it in their pocket. The card, read it later, read it later. They don't read it till about 19. They read the Bible. <laughs> All they want is the money. Dad! Yeah? Can we go to Dairy Queen? And that's it with what? With my money. With my money. How many know that they are 19 old kids, they still have the money from their fifth birthday? Yeah. <laughs> they never, it never runs out. It doesn't run out because dad and mom are having it all. See, understand something. In the process of life, you need to learn the value of life and the price of life and the sacrifice we make together. So when dad and mom, you come to ask for a privilege and they say no, I know we're human. We get upset like, oh, why not? And I know about life. Come on, people. This is something new. Understand this. It's real clear. Got this in there? Uh, you, mom, can I go with so and so and do this? No, no. Mom, mom. You don't trust me. <laughs> no, me, I trust you. I don't trust them. See, the influence of kids is the influence of school and friendship, and there's nothing wrong with us. It's clean. But when daddy and mama believe you can see things, they're going to call it. Why? Because they love you. There's a thing called tough love, where you have to say no, 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 and they say yes, yes and they can slam the door, and in their breath, they might say, that witch. Because it's usually the mom gets all the meat. Yeah. It's usually the moms get all the fat and that for the kids. Dad, my mom won't let me. And dad, you better be careful when you cross mama's back. And she's right. Understand? It's a family coming together to be blessed. The source says, children obey your parents. Bring honor that you may have a long life and be blessed. You want to be blessed? Honor your dad and your mom. Be obedient, be submissive. To what they're asking in your life. They want the best. They wish the best for you. They want you to be prosperous in everything you do. There's no greater joy than to see you prosper as you go through, as you go through life. Now, once we've talked about the source about the dad and the mom and we come into play, then we come into the idea and the concepts of our in our Christian <coughs> walk today as a family. They're responsible and we're going to carry out and understand, like I said, that one of the most difficult things we'll ever do in life is discipline. The one line that it's maybe changed a little bit because I haven't had a kid in my life for, uh, who's the younger, David? And you're 21, you know? 46. 
David is not the youngest. He's 46. <laughs> so I mean, I, you know, back in that time, it was different. Maybe things have changed a little bit. Some of you need to help me on this one, okay? But I know that when it came time to discipline, and uh, the old school discipline, the Board of Education to the Seat of Learning. How many remember that one? <laughs> you do that, they take your report now. They grow in a lawyer and all this other kind of stuff. And our famous lines were this. Get this, kids, all you guys. We would always say, Mijo, this is going to hurt me more than it hurt you. And the kid would say, well, don't hurt yourself. Then. <laughs> you know, make it easy on yourself. It's a mindset. How discipline forms who you are. You never know how much of your dad and mom is in your life. How much influence there is of them in your life as you go forward. So listen, observe, act and react, and learn that someday, if the Lord carries in coming, you will be where we are now today. I do not ask single kids that have been married have kids to understand of what I'm trying to tell you today. But the Lord carries in coming, and the way things look right now, it's not going to be too much longer, but he carries in coming. And I'm still alive. One day you'll sit in my office and say, you were right. You were right, Pastor. It doesn't take a genius. It just takes a dad that cares, a mom that cares, to see the well-being of their kids, for them to understand that they will be blessed. Step number two, how God will bless your, your family and you call them to play. Be obedient to the teachings of Solomon. Solomon said in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 6, says, train a child in his path, and when he gets old, he will not depart from it. We have a tremendous responsibility to teach them the word of God. There will be many teachers in our children's lives, many individuals who will touch a life in such a way that they make a part of who they are, influence. You were the first teachers. That long first teachers, and right away, right behind you was grandma and grandma. They were in the, they were in the, in the picture. We asked for discipline, and they chose to spoil me. <laughs> we asked, no, mom. Hi. They would say, you walk away, say, un cafecito, un guito. <laughs> you were the first influence on your kids' life. But then they went to school. Of all the ones the that went to school, even if you didn't like it, how many have a favorite teacher that touched your life? Oh, let me see, let me see. Thank you. That you wish you go, go back and thank you. For teaching. Of course, I would have to say that all mine are, I, I would have to tell them in heaven that we, if they make it up the right, that all of mine are gone. But I had a tremendous fifth grade teacher, math teacher, Mr. Goodwin, and he broke every rule of school you could ever think of. Now, kids, this is going to blow you away. When we're going to grade school, you couldn't even chew gum in school. That was a no no. No gum, no candy, no nothing. We walked in that day, first day of math. Close the door, says, kids, we're gonna be different. I'm gonna ask for 15 minutes of your time. It could be at the beginning, in the middle of the period, at the end, but you will give me your undivided attention. While I'm not speaking, you can bring sandwiches and Cokes and oranges and bubble gum, whatever you want. Well, give me my 15 minutes. And we go there. Okay. We say, cool. We all look, we all look forward to going to Mr. Goodner's class because fifth grade was the first time we would rotate classes. We were really bad. Rotate classes. And when in the first day, we were all excited. Everybody's like, bun, bun, to the job. He said, okay. Give me the last 15. So everybody, ah, I mean, He kept the door closed. So he was bad. Okay, my time. 15 minutes. And he talks. I learned more math that year than ever again in my life. He told me everything about math, not calculus, that's junk. One and one is two, that's math. Amen. That's all you need to balance your checkbook. You don't need calculus, you don't need math. No. He taught me more on how to teach, ask for a certain time, use it, and give liberty and people feel like I'm in my atmosphere. I can learn, he taught me that. Little did he know then, or did I know then that I was gonna be a pastor? And I had to use the same technique to say, hey, enjoy, but when it's my time, let me have my time. Let me have my moment to teach you. 
but I feel God laid upon my heart. But it's important that we understand that as being children, the teacher of our, our children, don't expect somebody else to educate your children in the ways of the Lord. Don't. No. Because the job was given to you as a dad and mom. Bring up a child in the way of the Lord. That way, when he grows up, he'll only depart from it. It's your job to pray with him and to sing with him. I practice in sing terrible. That's good at your turn house anyway. Teach him to love the Lord. Now, nothing more special in life as they testify the greatness of God. For many years ago, when, uh, you know when the beds had the big uh, headboards on it? Like, had a bed like that. And Robert was a baby. He was still small. He was still in diapers. And he was having a real bad fever and stuff. And laid him in bed. And when I reached over to get him, the cord of the, of the vaporizer got caught. And I thought like he dumped the complete hot water over his body. He burned. I burned him. I jumped out of bed, ran to the hospital with him to get my kisses on. And then a couple of days later, I see him sitting there peeling off the skin. I said, no, it doesn't hurt. And this has been part of my life forever. His answer was, Jesus, Daddy, Jesus. See, that's when you've done your job. That's when you've instilled into the mind and hearts of your kids with the answers. How God can meet their every need. How God is their source. I teach uh, inspiring to my kids. So we go biology for the exam of evolution. Answer the questions like they want to hear it, but you believe what you know is right in your heart. For it is our responsibility to encourage them to stand with them. We stand with them and back up our kids in whatever they do. Never be too busy not to be with your children when they most need understand that it's your companionship that makes you in your relationship with their kids. I'm mean, at a point in my life that I would never, never bypass my kids to do this. I didn't want, I didn't want my ministry to hinder their relationship with God by saying, my dad was always too busy to be with us. My boys played play sports. I was at every game they played. From little league all the way through. High school, I was there for every game. And I remember living in my life, and I talked about things of, as I watched the kids grow up. That uh, when Tom Work took over the job at Riverside being the football coach, he wanted to be the first team out. And at midnight, he would have midnight madness. When that came in David's senior year, I was in the hospital. They had done a heart procedure, and I was there. Midnight madness was going to be that night. And doctor walks in and says, hey, we did it, but it'd be well for you to stay here another night. Another day would be better for you. No, I'm leaving. Mr. Martinez, you need to stay. No, I'm leaving. <clears throat> it's my son's midnight madness, and this will never happen again. It only happens one time in his life, and I will be there for him. Long story short, when he came running out of the tunnels, he looked up and right above the tunnel, I was sitting there. Because I was being a dad, not a pastor. To be involved in their lives. To let them know that you really care. To let them understand that you're in their back in them. And they know that everything they do is a blessing to your life. You stress education. How many parents stress education? Yeah, get, get, get. Get all the schooling you get. We go in there and push and push and push for education. And then they honor us at graduation. Well, isn't it awesome when your kid comes home and says, I got a scholarship. It's better than say, shh, I am going to graduate. You know what I'm talking about? They say, I got a scholarship. And, and the things that will honor you. And the day they call your name out to come up and get your diploma. I remember one year we were at special events, and I, we were with John and Sandra. Was it Danny? I think it was. I read her lips when she said, that's my boy. Yeah, it's just the great feeling. And Danny, when that baby you, that grandma's holding, does that to you, you're going to be so proud. You're going to be so proud of what your kid did. Why? Because they achieved. 
We prepare them for college and for life. But let me ask you something. How we prepare them for eternity? We're so vested into the honor of good grades, which is awesome. Of special recognition, which is awesome. But what does a man gain if he gains the whole world or loses his soul? Is it more important for your kid to be a football star, baseball star, basketball star, your daughter to be more beautiful and all these things that come into play? Is it that important? Is it more important that they spend eternity with Jesus Christ? I think we need to choose our priorities. How we invest into that? I know I did it. I know I did it. When the kids were growing up, I even did it with John when he was growing up. I drive Johnny to school every morning. We drive to school together. We talked about his life, what his plans were, how he was going to teach certain things in life because it was part of my life. To instruct him and help him to bless him, to be able to know. And uh, Sissy would tell me, I don't know what's wrong with Johnny. They got him. Why? He says, I mean, I know he's smarter than he brings bees and an occasional egg. I said, because he's bored. He's bored. He's not being challenged. He's bored. You know, I said, watch, watch. He gets out of high school, goes to Western Tech because he asked me, what do you think that? I said, you know, I know kids with degrees that earn less money than someone to a tech school. I can't guarantee you, but not everybody's college mature. Not everyone wants to go to four years of college to get their, get their life going. So he went to Western Tech. When they would walk into the house in the den, we have a complete television set all over the den. I mean, all over, all the parts of part. What is this? It's my homework. I got to put it together and make it. Later on, Ceci goes to clean his room. I know how many moms know it's a challenge to keep your man, believe me, it's not a room, it's a jungle. <laughs> she walked in there, she says, You're not gonna believe this. I said, What? She said, Look, she put up all these recognitions, 4.0, D's list, everything was in the trash can. We didn't know it was in the trash can. So she said, Look. He says, I told you he wasn't being challenged. I told you. Johnny, you didn't say anything. Ah, that's just paper. I don't have a job yet. That's why he saw things. See, because we all have different ways to develop our relationship with our kids. To push them forward in education, but also push them forward into the presence and blessing of Almighty God. Everything else in life could fail, but Jesus never fails. Amen. So we stand and we do the best. The boys in athletics, I wouldn't bought them everything they ever needed. I mean, a bat that hits by itself, you know, <coughs> gloves, football equipment, braces. Now, David was very intelligent playing football. He had a very bad knee. He had to wear a brace in order to play. play. He practiced with the brace on his bad knee. Game time, he put it on his good knee. So he then come after the good knee and the bad knee's going to be okay. He had the wisdom of his dad. <laughs> but you know, this is what's special in life. You have all these great memories. But I ask you, if returning to would come calling today, are your kids ready to make it to heaven? That's the greatest gift you're ever going to give to them. That they might understand there's going to be one more graduation day. And we will all graduate on that day. Either when God calls you into his presence or the trumpet of the Lord is going to sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We will all get that day. And it's our job as our parents to bless our children and make sure, and make sure about their eternity. You can lead them to water, you can't make them drink. I can teach you, I can't make you do it. But it's not because you weren't, you did, you weren't taught. It's because you chose not. It's that they get bored, well, then bore them to death. Because death respects nobody. And they will face eternity shortly. The last thing is, how do we bless our children? What's the best way? I wrote in my notes, your relationship with that mom is for a lifetime. And so therefore, we never could be dads and moms. You see right back there? My mama, 96 years old, 
You're not going to believe this, people. Jesus called me my big baby boy. To me, to you. I'm Pastor Martinez. You see, he's my big baby boy. Because, see, many years ago, and I believe me, many years ago, that mom, May 20th, 1948, 19, okay, not 18, 1948, during, uh, Zaragoza eating chicharrones with the Bruno family, family that go went to church. And all of a sudden, I decided, Mama, I want out of here. And I had to come back over real quick, stay side, and go to the hospital. I told you just because. When the time came and my dad was told, you have a choice. Do we save the mom or do we save the baby? We can't save both. And being that the doctor, that the guy was a personal friend, he told my dad, Let's see the mom, we can always have another kid. If, if we serve the God of the impossible. So I need to tell you more of the story. We're both still here by the grace of God. Amen. Later on, I was born in May. And we went to Chama, New Mexico, to a big reunion where all the children get together. And there, I was dedicated to the Lord. All of these are seated here. Whether you were baptized because that's what you believed in, or you were dedicated. Your parents always wanted you to be blessed. When, when I stop and think that last Sunday I heard a message about blessing our children, it blew me away and said, God, this is true. When's the last time I actually took my kids, anointed them with oil, and prayed a continuous of God's blessing on their life? They're grown up. God has blessed them. They've been prospered. God has been good. But it doesn't mean that it's over. I still think I will be blessed today. My dad won't be here to pray with me, but my mom is. Table to know 75 years later, I'm still her kid. And then I need God's blessing. And I need his guidance. And we see her today, that's what we need. For the book of Mark, chapter number 10, Jesus is teaching the people. And then these ladies get all riled up and they're bringing a bunch of kids to Jesus and he would bless them. Make a bunch of rockers and it's like, hey, chill, hey, hey, calm down, calm down. He's busy. What do you want? We want him to bless our children. Oh, they got more important things to do than to bless their children. But how many know that when a woman makes up her mind, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. They keep the rockers going. And Jesus stops with what's happening. Oh, we told them you're too busy. For what? They want you to bless their children. I told them they're more important to do. And then, no, the Bible says, Jesus, no, 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 no. Let the children come unto me. Then the Bible says, he took them in his arms and placed his hands over them and blessed them. And today, we will do the same. Every dad, every mom will bless their children. And then if your children have children, they will bless their children. I know it's cool for grandma and grandpa, but it's the job of dad and mom this morning to pray blessing over their kids. They're not so small that you can't pray for them or so big that they don't need your prayers. And the day as you come forward with your family, we have prepared a little thing here that says he has my to show hand to you. It's a little vessel right, that has anointed oil. I didn't just buy it at the store and, and it's done, no. We prayed over it and brought it for merchandise to bless him, to God's way of doing things. If your family's not here, take it with you anyway. Go home and on his picture or her picture, put oil on and pray over it. Nobody is beyond prayer. They all need our blessings. That's the reason why we prepared enough to give you like, like an Robert's place, Robert needs one, but to uh, Adam, he went off. Out of that back, and so does uh, Aubrey need one. See, in that family, they need three. That's the problem. I don't know how many we're going to need, trying to make sure everybody got one. Even if your kids are not here, take one of those things of anointed oil and take it home and use it. Whatever you have left over, use it at your home for God's blessing, for healing, for things that represent. God's kingdom, God's physical presence in your house, the anointed oil as we go forward. So this morning, say, say, would you come in? You just twist the, the lids off of it. 
Take one of these, take your kids out to a corner, and you pray again. What do I do? Anoint them with oil. Ask God's blessing, God's protection, God's rush for you with the fire. Ask yourself for wisdom to lead them. And above all things that they might be loved. And I think the very first thing you need to do this morning, before you pray, before you pray, listen to me good, because I'm going to be watching. I want you to take time, kids, to tell that mom, thank you for all they've done. And tell them, I love you. Because that's a lot of times we forget to say these things. We're too involved with everything else in life. And there's nothing better for a dad mom to hear than for the kids to say, I love you. Aubrey, you have to listen, I feel like you love <laughs> But we say, keep the name of Jesus. I want you to come forward and take one of these. I'm just probably here. And go you come forward now and bless your family. Me and my house, we're going to bless you. There's nothing left.
In the house, we're going to serve the Lord. How many of you do that now? Now more than ever, people, look at the signs of time. Amen. And you know what the Bible says? When this happened, it's still not the end. It's going to get worse. So we better make sure that our kids are ready to face the rest. We've been working very hard all year at the event. That's like two weeks from the day, it's done. There's been a lot of sweat and tears and work and I want you all of you to understand something. This year, more than ever, we are organized. We're ready. I've always taught you that we learn from our mistakes. And because we're initiating in the first two, we've got lessons to learn that we have corrected. It's going to be ironic what I'm going to share with you right now because the most difficult thing to do in this event is to get pastors and prayer warriors to help us pray. I put out there, I'm not asking for money. I'm asking for prayer warriors to help. God will supply our needs. God will take care of that. But I can need warriors, believers. Out of all everything we've done, believe me, if the event were to happen today, we're ready. It's all in place. The programming, everything is in place, ready to go. And I thank God for that. I thank God for the ones that have made invention into this. Don't ever to understand that as a pastor of the church, everything that has happened has my blessing on it. Everything came through me. I was asking Jake to do certain things. I want him to learn the ropes because I'm not going to be here forever. I want him to understand how things work. But everything that was programmed, everything that was done, 
comes from here. From here to there, from there to where else we need we to go. We need to understand it. I think the only question I face from some people, and not because they're derogatory, they could want to know. Say, well, under the stars, isn't there going to be inside a building? And I said, yeah, but I think last time I checked, Starlight Event Center is under the stars. <laughs> it's under the stars. And honestly speaking, people, people that I've talked about and talked to the other ones have said, what an awesome decision to take it indoors. Oh, great. This is really a lot better than we've done in the past. I want to understand what we're doing this year is still not the big one. We're still heading toward the big We're just building following. We're building following as years go by. I might never get to see the big one, but at least I'm helping to build it to get there. So that means we're working hard. Uh, Sister Beto, why don't you get Sister Beto to help us in the with the pastors of prayer warriors. But uh, many of you know Sister Beto had a very serious operation. And they waited like, by the time they finally did operate, the all that had brushed. So she's going to a lot. She came within hours of becoming accepted. And so she like, at home getting better. I told her, don't you get up, don't you do anything. It's more important you have your health than you be here. So when we ask her, and she doesn't know that, but are you back tomorrow? She's in the summer. In the summer. Lazarus, I'm going to ask all the ones in this service, this Sunday, next Sunday, that would like to be prayer warriors with me at that service to sign up with my Let her know. Then next Sunday, we'll have a meeting as to Jack Barini. Like I said, my idea at the altar call was to have enough pastors and warriors to line up people up the aisles. And somebody raised their hand would go right there to them. So far, we don't have that, but I have one more week to work on it. If I don't see what I need, we're going to light it up across the front of the stage anyway. And have people come for extra prayer. The prayer of faith I will lead from the, from the altar. That way we can make sure that's taken care of it. Anybody who will come only comes for prayer of faith. So we want to do that. You want to help me that way? Then let's get our team together. Let's make sure that the Mosai has their worship team there and has also prayer warriors to help us lead other people to Jesus Christ. So we need your help. Sign up. It's close, people. Now, one last, because a lot of people are probably to get the Hashim Pope, right? Right yeah. uh, The last Sunday of the month is going to be the 29th, the day after the event. Crystal River is going to come minister that morning. We want to just kind of sit back and, go, and enjoy it. We minister too. I said I want to do only one service. And I come to realize that one service doesn't work financially for the church. Because some people are oh, not really going to go. No, they're going to go. And then nobody shows up. And then and what we need, we need to feed, we take what we got. So from 10 to 1045, we'll be all English. We'll pick up your offering and tithes, dismiss you, and you're going to do the same thing with Spanish. I just kind of need to do it. That's it's all there is to it. We're going to ask you just to cooperate with us. And uh, some people have been under the assumption like, oh, it was today. No, on the 29th is when we have 10 and